Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial from tech for all This is Saifuddin Ghanizada. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can install a child domain in an existing forest. Before we start the configuration, first we should know that what is a child domain. A child domain is a subdomain of one of the component domains in your Active Directory forest. Subdomain segmentations allow logical partitioning of the Active Directory and enforces rights delegations to the children. A child domain name always includes the complete parent domain name. A child domain name and its parent share a two-way transitive trust. What are the advantages of having a child domain? You can apply different policies, permission for set of users, resources in child domain without affecting parent domain rules and policies. It provides more control over the network and its resources and get best benefits out of it. Let's start the configuration now. Before we start the configuration, let me show you my test lab environment. Here, as you can see, guys, the demo environment, I have two domain servers in my forest. The first one is primary domain controller and the second one is additional domain controller. Both of them are running on Windows Server 2022 standard. The primary domain controller has an IP address of 192.168.137.3 and the additional domain controller has 192.168.137.4 IP address. For the sake of this tutorial, I will only add one child domain to my existing forest. I will add the Dubai branch office child domain. The server name will be win-2k22-cdc01 and the rule will be child domain controller. The OS version is Windows Server 2022 and the IP address will be 192.168.1.3. Let's start the configuration now. Here, as you can see guys, that I'm currently logged into the primary domain controller. Here you can see that the computer name is winsvr22-dc01 and the domain name is tech for all and the IP address is 192.168.137.3. Now, let's jump to my child domain controller. This is the child domain controller. Here, as you can see that it is newly installed and no settings has been applied on it. First, let me rename this child domain and then I will assign an IP address. To rename this domain, click on the computer name. It will open the system properties. Click on change and give it a name. Press OK. Click OK. Click Close. Let's restart the child domain computer. Now that the child domain controller is restarted before assigning a static IP address, let's jump to the root domain first. In the root domain, open Active Directory Sites and Services. On the Server Manager, click Tools and select Active Directory Sites and Services. Here, as you can see, guys, that a default first site name is already created. Now, let's create a new Active Directory site for the child domain. To create a new site, right-click on the site and select New Site. Give a name. The site name will be Dubai Branch Office. Select the default site IP link. Press OK. Press OK. Now, the Dubai Branch Office is created. Now, we need to create a subnet for the child domain controller or Dubai Branch Office. To create a new subnet, select subnets, right click on it and select new subnet. Provide the IPv4 prefix. I will be using the prefix of 192.168.1.0 and I will select the Dubai branch office site name, press OK. The subnet is created. Now let's jump to the child domain computer and assign a static IP address for the child domain. Click on the local servers, click on the IPv4 address which is assigned by DHCP server. 
on the network connections page right click on the ethernet adapter and select properties select ipv4 click on the properties and assign a static ip address Point to be noted that while assigning the manual IP address, you have to give the DNS server of the root domain, which is 192.168.127.3. Press OK. Here it gives me a warning that the default gateway is not on the same network from the network that I have assigned an IP address for my server. It's OK. Press Yes. Click on Close. Close the network connections page. Now I need to check the network connectivity that whether my child domain computer has network connectivity with the parent domain controller or root domain controller or not. Open Windows PowerShell. First, we will ping the IP address of the root domain controller. It can ping the IP address. Now we will ping the domain name, which is techforall.com. Here you can see guys that the child domain can ping both IP and the domain name, which means that our DNS on the parent domain works. Let's close the Windows PowerShell. Now we need to install the Active Directory Domain Services rule. Click on the Add Rules and Features on Server Manager. Click Next. Select Rule-based or Feature-based installation. Click Next. As I have only one server, which is by default selected, click Next. Select Active Directory Domain Services. Click on the Add Features. I also want to install the DNS server. Select the DNS server too. Click on Add Features. Click on the Next button. Click Next. Click Next. Click Next. And click on the Install button to install the DNS server and Active Directory Domain Services rule. Now that the installation is completed, let's promote this server to a child domain controller. Click on this link. The deployment configuration will be opened. We will be adding a child domain to an existing forest. So we will select the second one, which is add a new domain to an existing forest. From the select domain type, we will select child domain. If you want to implement three domain, you can select the three domain but I will be deploying a child domain, so I will select the child domain. Click on the change button to provide credentials. As I haven't created any super user, so I am going with the default administrator account. Press the OK button. The parent domain name is by default detected. Now I need to enter a new child domain. The child domain will be dubai.techforall.com because we are creating a server for our Dubai branch office. Click on the next button. From the domain functional level, you can select the latest or highest domain functional level. It is by default selected. And from the site name, you can see that it has by default selected the Dubai branch office because if you remember in the start of the video, we created a new site and we assigned the IP address of 192.168.1.0 for Dubai branch office. Select the Dubai branch office and now provide a password for the directory service restore mode. Click on next button. If you want to create DNS delegation, you have to leave this option checked as it is by default selected. Click on next. As the NetBIOS name is by default detected, it's OK. Click the Next button. I will not change any of the path for the database folder, log files folder, and syswall folder. Click on the Next button. Here you can review all the selections and settings that you have selected for the child domain controller. After you have reviewed all the informations, click on Next button. Here it will check for the prerequisites for domain controller operation. After the prerequisites check is finished, click on the Install button. And now we need to wait until the installation is completed. 
point to be noted that you will be logged out and the server will be restarted after the installation is completed. Now the server will be restarted. Provide the password to sign in. Now open the Active Directory Users and Computers. Click on Tools and select Active Directory Users and Computers. Click on the domain which is dubai.techforall.com and click on the domain controllers. Here you can see that we have one server in here and the DC type or domain controller type is global catalog and it is in the Dubai dash branch office site. Now the first thing we need to do in the child domain is to change the DNS address. Here you can see guys that the alternate DNS server is the root domain controller. Now we need to define the preferred DNS address which will be 192.168.1.3 which is the IP address of our child domain controller or its own IP address. Press OK and close all the network connections page. Now let's add a conditional forwarder in the child domain DNS manager. Open server manager. Click on Tools and select DNS. Click on the server name, expand it. Let's see the forward lookup zones. Here you can see that we have only one forward lookup zone, which is dubai.techforall.com. We don't have any reverse lookup zone. We will create one later. Click on the conditional forwarders, right click on it and select new conditional forwarder. The DNS name will be techforall.com and the IP address should be the IP address of root domain controller which is 192.168.137.3 and from here you can specify the number of seconds before forward queries timeout. I will change it to 3 and press the OK button. Now let's verify that whether our DNS manager works or not. Open Windows PowerShell and now we should ping the tech for all domain. As you can see guys that our DNS manager works very well. Let's close the Windows PowerShell. Here you can see guys that we have only one forward lookup zone which is dubai.techforall.com. The forest wide forward lookup zone is missing, which is underscore msdcs.techforall.com. Now, from the child domain, we have to ping the computer name of the primary domain controller or root domain. Open Windows PowerShell. And now we need to ping the computer name of root domain. Here, as you can see, that I can ping the computer name of our root domain, which means that our FQDN works. Now, let's move to the root domain controller. Open Active Directory Sites and Services. And now we will check for replication. Expand the sites. Expand the default first site. Here you can see that the replication link is in here. Let's check the replication link for the Dubai branch office. Right click on the NTDS under Dubai branch office, select all task and select check replication topology. Press OK. Now right click on the replication link and select replicate now. Let's do the same for our default first site name. Now let's switch to the child domain controller. In the child domain controller, we will check for the replication under forward lookup zone. Select the forward lookup zone and refresh it. 
as you can see that the forest wide forward look cap zone which is under the score msdcs.techforward.com is missing let's give it some time so that the forest wide replication to be done i will pause the video and will resume it after the replication is completed after waiting for 20 to 25 minutes the forest wide forward look cap zone has been replicated in the child domain controller dns manager now let's create a reverse look cap zone Select the reverse look cap zones, right click and select new zone. Click next. We will create a primary reverse look cap zone. Click next. And we will create it for all the DNA servers running on the domain controller of dubai.techforall.com. Click next. Select IPv4. Click next. Here you need to provide the first three octets of your network. Click next and I will allow the secure dynamic updates which is recommended for active directory. Click next and click finish. Oh, I have an error. Here it says that I need to sign in from an enterprise administrator account so that I can create a reverse lookup zone. It's okay. I will sign out of the current user and I will sign in from the enterprise administrator account. Now that I'm signed in from an enterprise administrator account, let's launch the DNS manager. And now let's create a reverse lookup zone. Now that the reverse lookup zone is created, let's check the pointer record for the child domain computer. Here you can see we don't have any pointer record for the child domain controller. To create a new pointer record, first let's go to the forward lookup zone and from there we will select the dubai.techforall.com. From there select the record right click on it and select properties and check this option which says update associated pointer record click on apply click ok let's move back to the reverse look have zoom and reload it here you can see that a new pointer record for the child domain controller is created now let's do a final checkup and check whether the replication works between the child domain and parent domain or not. I will use the Active Directory Replication Status tool. Open the Active Directory Replication Status tool and click on the Refresh Replication Status. As you can see guys that I don't have any issue with the replication. If you don't know how to use the Active Directory replication status tool, I have made a video on it. The link is in the description. Let's check for the replication in the root domain too. In the root domain, open Active Directory replication status tool. And then click on the refresh replication status. Here you can see guys that we don't have any errors in the replication status tool of Active Directory. Which means that the replication between the child domain and parent domain works fine. And that's all for today. If you need any help, comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I will catch you very soon with another tutorial. Till then. Have a nice time.